Health and public health don't sit by themselves in a section over here. Health and public health are related to everything that happens around us, related to the economies we live under, the governments we live with and the wider society which we all live in and also related to the environment around us. That can be the environment as in the structures and society, but also very much the physical environment as in forests and animals and the biodiversity around us. So we can look at health through this thing called a planetary health lens, where we see that the health of these systems around us, of the environment around us, directly impacts our health as individuals and as a population. Alternative fuels, for example, are, are one thing that could degradate planetary health and therefore degradate public health. Alternative fuels that use combustion contribute to air pollution and, and continue to emit air pollutants, which affects public health. Combustion engines and using alternative fuels that continue the system of combusting also contribute to noise, particularly in urban centres in Europe. So the issues of noise pollution will still continue. And then also if you're combusting, you are producing emissions. And those emissions go into the atmosphere and affect our climate, affect our planetary health and do degradate both the climate and planetary health. Things like biodiversity, things like pollinators, things like water scarcity. All these things won't be solved by continuing alternative fuels because alternative fuels continue to affect air, noise, climate and planetary health. Air pollution is the number one environmental health threat that Europeans face, but also people face globally. In Europe, every year, 300,000 people at least die as a direct cause of air pollution, and globally, it's up into the millions. Air pollution affects people in profound ways, individually, but also on a population scale, and not just kind of irritation or irritated eyes, but also hospitalizations, cancer, and people dying. And people who are marginalised or people who are vulnerable, such as children, old people, people on lower incomes, are much more susceptible to the effects of air pollution and to a degradation in their health. Alternative fuels in some studies release more nitrogen dioxide than traditional fuels and definitely more than sustainable electric vehicles, for example. And Anything that kind of combusts and still relies on a combustion fuel releases emissions and this is just releasing continuous air pollutants that will continue to pollute the air, continue to affect public health in Europe. Noise pollution is the second most significant environmental exposure that Europeans face. And noise pollution isn't just sort of an annoyance that we all live with, maybe, you know, a bit annoyed that we can't have a conversation or something with our friends. It impacts our sleep, it leads to hypertension, as in high blood pressure, and leads to cardiovascular disease. There is emerging evidence from some studies as well that noise pollution from traffic is linked to things like breast cancer and to cognitive decline. Noise pollution also affects communities and affects culture. In, in you know, villages, for example, if you have noise and you have truck noise going through these villages, the culture and the, the community and the integration of these sort of spaces is impacted. Alternative fuels will continue to contribute to noise pollution in Europe, particularly in cities. Things that use a combustion engine to combust fuel will produce noise. And fuel-based vehicles have been shown to have more noise than electric alternatives in European cities. In terms of climate change, the World Health Organization has said that climate change is the greatest health threat that we're facing globally. Climate change stands to make 3 to 3.6 billion people highly vulnerable to the effects of climate change and we're already seeing the effects of these on heat, on flooding, on sea level change, on the severity of storms we're all facing. Combustion fuels contribute to climate change. The, anything that kind of combusts will have some sort of carbon output and not just in the kind of combustion part either, in the production of them and in all of the ways, all the systems that lead to this thing producing energy. And these things that are put into the atmosphere stay there for decades, hundreds of years and have an effect on the climate. You know, these, these are climate active gases and emissions and these will contribute to the, the warming and to the greenhouse and to the change in the climate that we will suffer in public health. You know, it'll be health that is the thing that suffers here. All of these factors combined then contribute to a degradation in planetary health. And when we're looking at planetary health, we're looking at all of the systems and environments that we live under. So when you have air pollution and noise pollution and things that affect the climate, degrading planetary health, you can expect that things like water security, biodiversity, bee pollination, all of these things will be affected as well. And all of those do have a direct effect on our public health. 
Sustainability isn't just a buzzword that we throw around. It has real world consequences and, and things that are truly sustainable will benefit public health. Changes for a healthy environment stand to greatly benefit public health. Policymakers really have a chance in you know, European policies, for example, to make a substantial difference to the environment and also to our climate and effectively to our public health, the health of everyone. So when, when policymakers go forward, they really need high ambition to protect public health because it stands to protect everyone. There is the most marginalized and vulnerable who suffer the most, but public health will protect everyone and also enable the most vulnerable and most marginalized communities.